So I want to spend a few moments introducing you to um, some of the basics of jumping, branching, um, instructions that are part of MIPS. Those are the things that allow you to do loops, such as do loops, while loops, and so forth. So let me kind of um, talk briefly about this idea of, of a branch. Right? If you didn't have um, instructions that can branch, your, um, your code would essentially just go linearly. You can imagine it going from top to down, and it would proceed in a linear fashion. Uh, branches and uh, jumps allow us to do something better than that. We can we can actually jump back up to an instruction if we mark that instruction with a label. Um, so the instructions that we're going to look at right now um, include the the BEQ and the BNE. Those two together are uh, kind of siblings. Um, let's see if I can turn this pin on. Those two are kind of siblings in that they're branches to a particular label based on a condition of two registers being equal or not. And then these two are also siblings. The set on less than, where you can see if one register is less than another, or if one register is less than immediate, you use the set on less than immediate. And then there's this jump instruction, which is just a uh, um, a hardcore just jump to a particular address and label. So branches and jumps have to go somewhere and labels labels are what allow us to do that. And labels are essentially code locations. They're areas in memory that you can jump to. So um, if you recall with your switch case statements um, this value here ultimately serves as an integer, right, or it is an integer, it should be an integer, um, and then the reason that that's an integer, because that integer um, in the underlying uh, machine code has to get converted to one of these particular cases, and each one of those cases corresponds to an address, so the key thing about these cases is that um, if you look at the, the colon there, there's a pattern where colons represent labels. We've seen that in MIPS a little bit, and we're going to see it here. Um, uh, we've seen it in MIPS, but you, you, you certainly have probably seen it with um, with Java, and, and not necessarily identifying it as a label of, as such, but you'll see consistencies between the various languages. So the I'll have you take a look at this. I, I'll just spend a, a quick second on this. The C go to statement. At one point it was considered harmful. Dijkstra, Edgar Dijkstra back in 1968. <clears throat> back in 1968 at some point he wrote this article called go to statement um, is considered harmful. And he was making an argument for removing the go-to statement from coding languages because it just led to spaghetti code. Um, it was hard sometimes to see a go-to that might be embedded somewhere and you would write code, one could write code that kind of could proceed linearly down, it would go somewhere, it could jump in, jump back out, jump back in, jump back out, jump back in, jump back up. Um, versus a for loop, which in general has this pattern of where it flows linearly from top to bottom with a single point of entry, um, a single point of exit, there's a initialization, there is a test, and then there is a modifier, something that changes um, the variable. So this for loop, every time it kind of goes through, before it goes and does a test, it will go ahead and do an increment, typically I++ or something like that for a loop, and then it will check a condition to see whether or not it should continue. Um, the go-to statement is similar to um, the loop structures that, that you might have seen in Java, in that um, it allows you to go back up to a top. So you can imagine that in your for loop there's a go-to at the bottom that takes you back up to the top. So in this example here we have a label 
we have an increment, we have some things that we wish to, um, some statements we want to execute, and then we have a condition at the end. And based on that condition, we decide whether or not to continue looping. So that, in effect, acts like, um, you know, a, 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 more like a do while loop than anything else, where there's a do which just is really a label, essentially it's a starting point. There is a bit of code here. There is a print statement, several print statements. And then um, there is a while. And at the bottom of this while statement, there's a check here. Um, while i is less than 2, um, it will go to the top, right? So we have three print statements, one, two, and three. <coughs> we have um, a condition, while i is less than two, and then we have something that takes us up to the top. So what we're looking at with our C code here is a, um, a do while loop, um, because it's, you know, essentially it functions just the same. And so you can combine go to statements and labels so that you can do for loops, while loops, and do while loops. Um, if you want to play around with this, take a look at uh, this uh, this code that's there on CodePad. Um, you can go ahead and and uh, and just kind of you know link into that if you wish to play with the code. But the output from this is what you see here. So, um, in the next segment, I'm going to talk about the jump instruction. Um, so that was the introduction to to why we want to do um, different conditionals or different tests um, and different branching statements. Next, let's talk about this. So I'll pick up in a in the next um, segment.